Hey guys, welcome back to Oxygen Not Included, Clay's Amazing Space Colony Simulator Extraordinaire. My name is Twitchy, and about 693 cycles ago, we printed off three duplicates and started carving ourselves out this beautiful base that I now like to call the LZ Alpha. A little while ago, we started working on this, and I promise you, dear viewer, this is the last episode we're going to spend on it. The whole idea, for those of you that are just joining in uh, later on or something like that, we've got a couple of oil wells up here. I want to dump the oil down into this hole under here. As you can see, I have been dumping some crude oil. We then take the heat of the magma and using the wonders of this uh, automated uh, airlock here, uh, it, this will close to allow the heat through to warm this area up to over 400 degrees. Once upon, the crude oil will turn into petroleum. Then it will hopefully flow over here just from the pressure of the, uh, the crude oil we're pumping in, where then this whole heat deletion system will start coming into play because obviously we've now warmed it up to a far beyond beyond any temperature we can use uh, uh, to pump up. We can't, we, we need a, um, let's, let's have a look at the pump. I will show you here. If I hit, click, hit the liquid pump, we have a look at the steel over here. You can see that it's got an overheat temperature of 75, but with it being made out of steel, it's 275. Let's look over here at the end chamber. That, that's, that's, that's far too hot. Look, that's 308. Just, just not acceptable, not acceptable. So I figured out what we need to do is put down a little bit of a sump here. I think I'm even gonna go as far as to cut this off, because we want to try and like get the amount of thermal mass down. Do we? Do we? I don't know. I, I feel like now that we've already got this hole here, we're just going to carry on doing this. If I go ahead and do that, uh, make myself a nice set of dig orders, I'm going to come along and set this temperature sensor to zero. Um, Am I? Am I? No, above zero. <laughs> and then I'm going to press P0 and turn all of this into the most important jobs we have on the map. Uh, not so much about these sweep orders here, but I want to get people down to dig this out, this area out, and to make it as good as possible. Because as you can see, we are already starting to uh, let le liquids leak through in here. Uh, we've got this down to about 300 degrees, but over this side, you can see already starting to spike up to 320. Uh, we've got petroleum, uh, sorry, crude oil turning into petroleum underneath in fact we have got lead melting underneath here because of all the temperature coming through so i really want people to get come down here and deal with this super fast super fast okay here come the crew now lunar cops seem to have been a little bit of ahead of everybody else so i'm fine with that just as long as people get down here got misaligned and mad frank and i think jelly might be in the background there i'm not sure what the help jelly's actually gonna provide he is a deliverer of services of goods so that might be the one forest i was expecting him to be running a lot faster but no he, he's lagging a little bit behind right they do start complaining as soon as they enter the 400 degree petroleum uh but you know that you expect that it's 400 degrees of petroleum so um, thankfully the, uh, the the exosuits here seem to do a wondrous job of keeping them safe. Uh, the, the wonders of the materials we made it out of. To be honest, I thought we just made it out of reed fiber and plastic. Um, I wasn't expecting them to be as good as this, but th th there we go, reed fiber and plastic. Uh, so I'm, I'm feeling good about how this first construction is going here. I've got a feeling that we're going to get all of this finished before the end of the cycle is called. Uh, obviously, this is something that doesn't happen very often to me. Normal, normally, what happens is we start a job off uh, at the beginning of the, the episode like this, and then I realize that actually it's only about 30 seconds until the end of uh, downtime or whatever. But no, no, today we have downtime. I wonder what materials we've got in the background here. More are wondering, is there any... Um, Anything here we don't want to be losing underneath. I think we're okay. It's just a bunch of lead. Maybe some of the iron I'm a little bit sad to, to see gone. Uh, the abyssalite, nah, fossil more than anything, because that we can grind up into uh, lime so that we can make a bunch more steel. But, you know, that that's fine. Sacrifices are made so that we can have a thermally insulated box over here. A little bit worried about how hot the temperature has got into here. It's about 350. Uh, and I, we, again, we're down to 300s rather than 315s. But that, that's the flow of temperature right now. Okay, Mimi has made a delivery. Miss Alliance has decided that she is going to turn around and uh, help out. Who's this? Luna? Oh, getting in for the sweeps. Luna, you, you are a babe. Love it. Great, thanks. Carry on with that. I'm not sure why picking up the rubbish off the floor made her a babe. But, you know, there we go. La language is a funny old thing. And we have got this job well and truly in hand now. I think I'm going to go through and turn this all back back up um, before we start thinking about how we're actually going to be getting this petroleum around the outside in and underneath 
but only when it's cold enough. We don't want to be sending it down here if it's uh, just going to be bringing 300 degrees up into this area here. So if we're down to minus 100 or something, maybe we could drop it down through a valve uh, and bring pick up a little bit of heat and bring it back up. Okay, just set this back to below 200. It is going to take us a long, long time to get back down to there. As I said, we were down to about 300 degrees and now we're uh, up at 350 again, which is, you know, always nice. Something else that I think I would like to do is to change the way this automation is set up. I would like an AND gate. Yeah, indeed. I want to have an AND gate set up just... Oh, yeah, actually, that would be great. One there and then one on the other side over here so that we could have these uh, taking the temperature for both. Because at the moment, as you can see, the steam underneath is only really getting up to a, a temperature of about 130, something like that, which is, uh, as you can tell by the red bar across here, not the most efficient temperature to be going in at. We really want to have about 200 degrees under here so uh, let, let's go ahead and start putting the, the sensors into place i'm going to have a thermo sensor on this side and a thermo sensor on this side or did i want to have them underneath i think i am no no we're going to leave them there we're going to leave them there and as i said we're going to get the uh, the and gates out and we're going to swap this around this way oh you know what i could even go nestle it over the top like that that would be great and then this one could go in there like so all right beautiful beautiful uh back to the automation wire iron beautiful uh, i want to come out of there and down like that and then i want to push this one up like that uh and then if we just try and destroy that that's job good in that one or at least all the orders are jobs are good in there uh, and then we want to do the same right here if at all possible uh pull that across and then ask for all these to be deleted oh okay that when morning comes is our next job oh oh every now and then you can see the little bit of vacuum opens up i think oh nearly nearly i think we're getting down to the low enough temperature where the molten lead actually wants to fall back out as a, an item oh, oh nearly 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 let's have a look here uh, i believe if i remember correctly it's uh 327.5 so oh if we can get down to three uh three three 4.5 then that should be the three degrees that are needed Oof, for the state change there we are definitely getting down low enough but it might take a few more seconds than i've got words to fill to write a small jump cut will get us there uh, we are actually down a low enough temperature 334.2 yeah okay so i don't i'm not sure entirely why it's not dropped out i should imagine that it's uh it keeps trying to drop out and then finding hotter temperatures down below actually no it's it's cooler down here it definitely should be dropping out right now well whatever's going on down there misaligned and mad frank have turned up i want to have this above 200 degrees thank you very much i also want to have this one uh, above 200 degrees all right beautiful beautiful that's going to be setting those guys up to be receiving a signal only and only when the steam at is at the maximum temp well not the maximum the uh, most efficient temperature it needs to be now that these have been opened up i've got these at the highest priority possible so hopefully mad frank and misaligned maybe will be coming along to do the jobs what's mad frank up to now he's going to store the materials and then he's going to deconstruct a whole bunch of stuff here uh, i have a feeling that miss herself is, oh, no, she's gone is gonna go get a whole bunch of iron uh yeah we'll see what happens here no have i ever mentioned that i'm dyslexic that's a two in the middle not a three i don't know what's up with me <laughs> also while we're at it uh dyslexia has nothing to do with numbers that's actually dysnumeria let's uh let's not go around throwing some misinformation about shall we i am dyslexic but i'm also just an idiot okay so the automation is put into place you can see these guys up above are very much giving the correct answer saying hey we're cold enough in here to be turning on and indeed they are very much cold enough in there to be turning on but the steam underneath the steam underneath is a pitiful 150 degrees so we're waiting until we get up to 200 degrees before this will also give the uh, the green signal and then the two green signals need to come together to produce another one on this side same on this side now oh, look we're, we're actually at the bit where the lead wants to fall out of the uh out of the suspension as well here yay i think we've got this underside automation set up a little bit wrong here whilst this is very nice to have and make sure that this doesn't get overwhelmed it's not really what we want to do we're not not having to wanting to tie these doors to the temperature of the internal state here we actually want to tie these doors on the right to the temperature of the internal state so when it's underneath 200 degrees it'll open those doors so we don't overwhelm the temperature of the pump in here what we actually want these doors over here set up to is a hydro sensor so that it can tell you whether the uh, whether we are dry in here and need extra petroleum coming in from the outside that's what we really need so i wonder how i'm going to go about rearranging this i reckon i could just put a hydro sensor on the underside here and then maybe build another one of these units maybe up here 
Yeah, maybe. Okay, here's a hydro sensor. Let's let's drop that there. Then let's uh, say we want to deconstruct that. I then want this ore gate. Let's uh, let's grab that and press the B right. Uh, that's automation wire. If we could grab that, thanks. Right. Uh, we'll turn that around. We'll do it on the top here. This looks good. Uh, does it look good? Can I get into where I need to get into? Not like that. I can't. So let's cancel this. Uh, we need the output of the ore gate going into the middle one, not to the outside one. So I'm going to have to think about that a little bit harder. Oh, we can totally use the top because we could uh, bridge across the middle here and then use the gate. Uh, it's cool. I, I know what I'm doing roughly. Okay, so we've got to put the uh, the OR gate in. Now, the OR gate is just there so that we can set up a little bit of delay between the other side. And this kind of works like a pulse uh, pulse constrictor, right? Um, it wants to just send out the signal that gets received from here. Whoa, someone's got a loud engine. Yeah, it's a sunny day here, so people are starting to take out their, their, their vehicles of... I don't know, whatever you want to call them. Uh, but anyway, so the signal wants to go up and through, but this OR gate here is uh, ready to receive a, uh, a secondary signal that's going to turn it off. So this is the, the NOT gate up here. That is going to fight the signal that's uh, that's immediately going through. But if we didn't have this buffer gate, uh, it would just turn it straight off. They would receive a yes and a no at exactly the same time, and nothing that we did would actually turn that on. But because the buffer gate is here, it delays the NOT signal just enough to let a little blip out. Uh, and that's what we're using to, uh, to, to, to control all of this. Yes, indeed. All right, so I'm going to send that one up there. Uh, we're going to wire it up just like so. The confusing bit is that your input wants to, from the temp temperature sensor, wants to go both to the buffer gate and this input of the uh, of the ore. And you want your output from that into the middle two. And then we're using an automation bridge to just literally take the signal from the thermo sensor and pop it to your outside doors. And there you go. Beautiful, wonderful working system. Unfortunately, we need to... Uh, get into the this though <laughs> thankfully we don't have to let too much heat through straight away we can let the uh let the guys get in onto this top layer it means we're only going to be able to do this this very top bit here but that should be enough to uh just kind of ease us into the process right so miss has come down and done this last knot gate under here so i think it's time for this to become the most important thing in everybody's universe i'm going to hit above 20 we're going to press zero uh sorry p9 and i'm just going to yeah, drag that across. Panic-inducing, panic-inducing alarms everywhere. Oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. I've got to go through and turn all these doors back down onto a five rather than have them being panic inducers. But, uh, you know, it's, it's going to work out all right. It's going to work out all right. I wish there was a way... Oh, in fact, there is a way. I, I, I was just about to say, I wish there was a way to select uh, certain things. But it, it's all there, look. It's all there. I believe the, do, uh, the doors are on duties. Uh, and, of course, everything else is construction, digging, cleaning. I have forgotten to do a thing that I said was very, very important, and we're going to do it just like this. We cancel that lot, and we cancel that lot. Okay, everybody should be able to carry on accessing the doors all the way up until the last moments. If they've carried on uh, putting the, uh, the, the wires across the bottom of the doors, that is where the automated inputs uh, go in and that would have meant that they would have been locked uh, through these doors in the same manner they're locked from this door. I was kind of hoping that they would be able to put the hydro sensor together. I don't want I don't want to cut these wires but I th I, we might we might have to we might have to. Uh, so we go automation let's cut these bottom wires here we can put them back together afterwards. Uh, it doesn't look like they took that did they? Okay let's uh, let's go with the the overlay. Okay, yeah, it, it, it's fine. It's good. It's wonders. Uh, the hydro sensor was made out of lead anyway. Let's change that back into an iron one. And then maybe there'll be enough kicking around for them to think that this is the most important thing that they do, need doing. Uh, and I, I really do hope so, because that's how we're going to get them out. Uh, yeah, okay, cool. That That is working out all right. Let's put that wire back in place and this wire back in place. Uh, and then hopefully we can uh, get this all working as intended. Okay, doors are now controlled by this hydro sensor. Uh, we've got a few few bits of automation to put back in. Uh, of course, we wanted these doors to be accessible, so we only filled in little bits. Uh, let's try this, and then we'll do the bottom doors from there and work our way back. Uh, and then hopefully, once everything's sorted, we should have a nice system here for bringing the temperature down and feeding it into here when it's cool enough. Okay, with all those wires in place, we hit below over here because we want it to be below 200 degrees, not upper 319. Oh, wow. Uh, that should then make these, yep, thermally seal from the rest. Now we're going to be cooling this lot down uh, whilst that's not... Oh, okay, we also need to say, hey, uh, if this is below 100 kilograms, send me some more of those tasty, tasty petroleum liquids. 
One thing I'm going to do quick just over this side is to knock out these little bits of dirt that are impeding the flow of the gas. As you can see, we've been having a little bit of a victory against the sour gas with our giant destructinator of doom over here. Uh, every time all the doors open, all the gas, the sour gas, which we got by accident by throwing petroleum onto too hot magma, um, all the all that sour gas kept on, keeps on flowing up and into this space that is caught, that is uh, left by the doors being opened. Then finally, slowly, after a little bit of time, oh, it's going to take some time, so let's wait for that to go up so I can tell you about it. And then slowly, after a little bit of time, the green signal that's slowly come through on here uh, has gone through two signal processing systems. It's literally just a delay signal. So this first one slams shut, causing an internal va uh, internal space in between here, which then all the other doors close down and crush. So we end up with uh, this basically making a wall of doors uh, and then destroying all the sour gas inside. But, but we got a we got a bit of a bottleneck here. The the gas can't get under here. We need to improve that quite a bit. If you're wondering why I'm so insistent that we need to get this system sorted, uh, it's because almost all of my geysers are currently, where, where's the next one gone, are currently in a state of dormancy. This has caused me to have very many problems, as I'm sure you can appreciate. That is literally all my natural gas geysers dormant. The only place we're actually getting any sort of consistent power from is the steam geyser here, which uh, seems to be having some trouble. Why are you having trouble? Why are you hot? What? Oh no, oh, oh, I see we've got a big problem here. We got a layer of gas at the top there. That was why, that was why we had that um, pump that we had here. Okay, okay, all right, well, let's try and work on that. Let's get a gas pump. Where are you, you? Right. Oh, we could do a mini gas pump. Uh, what's the overheat temperature? 75, we can't, can't deal with that. No, no, as it is, we're gonna have to use a steel one. Okay, with the majority of this pumping system in place, I'm going to be relying on two mechanics, really, to keep this thing flowing. Let's take this air flow tile and pump it right up. You can see that down underneath here, we've got five kilos of steam. That is significantly more than the, like, 200 grams of oxygen and whatever this uh, this natural gas is. It's about the same 200 grams. So I'm hoping the pressure alone will be enough to push that out. And I was about to say I'm hoping that uh, we could use the gas pump to encourage that with negative pressure. But, of course, there's no power because because there's no power. It'll, it'll work out, it'll work out. Also, 696, nice. Okay, here we go. My boy Strauticus coming along to remove that airflow tire. We're gonna have a horrific outgassing of steam here, but we're, we're just gonna have to live with it, basically. We are just gonna have to live with it. I'm gonna immediately uh, put down a job for that to get refilled in, because I'm hoping, hoping that just the pressure is enough for it to uh, to start working. Uh, that's that's a negative right there. That is a negative. All right, I'm gonna uh, put a door in that I hoped I wouldn't need to. Oh, I can't put that there because of the heavy watt wire. Okay, there's obvious, obviously only one solution to this. Destroy this large power transformer. It's got to be the only way forward. Okay, we're gonna go immediately go ahead and do that. And the reason that I want to do that, give me that large power transformer back, so that I can press B and move it along just one block. I, I just wanna move it along one block, please. And the reason for that means most insignificant of changes is so I can get a door in here and we can start putting an actual negative pressure up. That would be very handy right now. Okay, after having waited far, far too long for this transformer to start pushing some power through, I've noticed that I've got a bunch of power down here. So we're going to try and hook up the two systems together. I've already disconnected this wire down here from the system because, oh, that's low watt wire and actually we don't need power onto those doors. So I've gone ahead and done that. I was kind of expecting this to have brought all the stuff for this conductive wire. Who's on it now? Oh, no one it turns out. Out. Let's uh, change that. Nope, it turns out Mad Frank had said that it was Miss Alina. I clicked on it to go and have a watch her, watch her arrive, and then Mad Frank came along and stole all the glory. Okay, so now that we've done that, this pump in here, made out of steel, I might remind you, so we can take all the way up to 275, which is lower than the steam in here, uh, should now be enabling us to start pump pumping all of this oxygen out of here. Because this door is now locked, as you can see, uh, it should be moving almost all of this gas, uh, all of the oxygen, all on its own. Uh, there we go, it is doing so we've, we've needed to get Forrest involved to start moving some of the power around, but that, that's fine. As long as he can keep it running and keep this oxygen dropping down in the G factor, that's the number of grams, that it should work out pretty well for us. And I've got to be honest, it seems to be working quite well. Is the least number of grams on this side or is the least number of grams on this side? Uh, it looks like the least is on this side. That's going to be interesting when the steam starts pushing its way up, right? I'm actually wondering if it would work out better if before we hit zero G, here we move forests so that all the gases have a chance to redistribute 
distribute themselves into a bit more of a smooth and uh, continuous manner rather than having like the massive dip over here and the high rate over there. Uh, but I might just leave it. I might just leave it and see what happens. It's not like we're pulling any ga any steam through yet, so this this will be fine. Probably get a little warm out here though. Well, whether we wanted forests to stop or not, downtime has been called, so it should uh, start to smear it all out. I noticed that we've got a little bit of power in the jumbo battery, but of course this thermo aqua tuner also wants to get used. Uh, no, it doesn't. All right, fine. Ignore me. That's that's fine. That's fine. Overnight, the battery ran dry, and I was just having a look at the densities here. We're at 66 and 40. Yeah, it definitely smoothed itself out, kind of evened out the distribution somewhat. Uh, I'm hoping that actually Forrest is on his way to this, because it's quite important. I'll miss a line, in fact, all the way from the other side of the old base. Crazy, crazy. We really need to make this a little bit more of a thoroughfare rather than just a storage place. Maybe take down these old uh, atmospheric suit checkpoints, stuff like like that. Okay, let's have a look and see what's going on. Miss is going to start running, and we are losing grams again. Beautiful. Let's sped up the time just a little bit here as we can try and cruise our way through the day and get rid of this oxygen here. As you can see, we've got like a very small number over here, and even at the, the, the highest rate, oxygen being the bottom one of the tooltips, breathable gas, 5G. We're down into the milligrams, micrograms, whichever one it was, uh, but over this side, we're still uh, at 10 or so. I was really expecting the overwhelming pressure of the steam to have uh, compacted this down by now, but it turns out no, we've, we've got to wait more time. Maybe a whole day or something. I, I, I literally don't know. I just really hope it doesn't, like, send some steam up into here and then we end up pinching off the oxygen from from the pump. That would be very bad. In fact, that would mean that we'd have to move this over there. And I, I don't really want to do that. All right, we're into the small numbers range over this side as well. Cool. And it happened, right? Awesome. Cold damage. Okay, we got, we got to stop what's going on over in this side right now. If I go B, put that down, and then go, hey, could you do it at the most important job of the entire world? Uh... Do I want to do that? Yeah, I do want to do that. I do want to do that. My, my next job, my next idea was actually going to be, well, actually, let's just leave it open and uh, let it keep emptying out all the gases. But I, th I think that's probably a very bad idea. Let's once again press F4. We've got a tiny, tiny little amount of oxygen going around up there, but I think I'm fine with that. Ooh, yeah. All right. Brilliant. We got, we got the system working again. I'm just going to leave this pumping nothing out. Yeah, great. So I came back here to find a significantly cooler pu puddle in this section than the end one. And I was like, oh, that's great. But it's not really the way around that I want to do it. So what I'm going to do is open up these middle doors, as I have already done, to let the heat from these two start mingling with each other and try and bring both the temperatures down significantly so that we can actually put the pump in here, as I've been talking about. That'd be great, wouldn't it? Oh, pump in here would be so good. So it turned out that all my radiant pipes in here were made out of lead. That's a very bad idea as we're dealing with petroleum. That is well over the boiling point of lead. I just wanted to come in with you guys. I've not done anything particularly remarkable, but I've noticed uh, so called 700. I wanted to uh, have a little little um, celebration with you guys about that. Woo! Also, I have got and uh, gone and installed myself that mod I've been talking about for a little while. Pliers, just do that. Oh, look at that. It's, it's suddenly taken away that little join there. And I didn't have to spill... Uh, petroleum everywhere. It kind of makes sense, you know. Uh, and thankfully, this now means that we've uh, emptied the petroleum out of these little insulated pipes here. And we should now be spreading the uh, the heat out over this way. Because I've noticed that this edge over here, steam uh, 210 degrees, say what? Uh, but now that we're starting to spread it over just a little bit wider, this steam turbine up here should hopefully encourage the, uh, the chilling just a little bit faster. Hoping to bring down the temperature of the petroleum in here much much quicker given the temperature gradient across here actually i might even drop this down to 190 i just want to stop this door overheating so much you know it's not escaped my notice that it's only this one that's turning on or off so i'm wondering whether we want to actually drag a whole bunch of radiant pipe out like this and then bring it back no that's not the one i wanted with the insulated pipe like coming back over this way and i think that should give, give us quite a, an interesting cooling situation well, well i mean technically heating but cooling well so i kind of feel like at some point, we're going to come to a much bigger milestone than uh, Cycle 700. Even 750 is a little bit more impressive, if you ask me, than Cycle 700. You know, three quarters of a thousand. But when we actually get to that Cycle 1000, what should we do to kind of celebrate that? I, I literally have no idea. It's, uh, it's wondrous, but just merely the fact that my duplicates are alive kind of works for me, you know? <laughs> 
Uh, we have the problem of this thermal aqua tuner up here still overheating. It's very much further away from the steam vent here, but it's still just not enough. Maybe if we were throwing this over the top of it, I, would st I still don't think it would be enough, though. So the, crew, the whole crew have just been in to come along and put down these pipes for me. It's looking pretty good, though. We are looking a little bit empty of petroleum. We'll try and figure out how to deal with that at some point. But really what I'm trying to find out is whether we are gaining heat or losing heat from the perspective of the individual petroleum bubbles. It looks like we might be losing heat. So they're coming in. Uh, let, let's have a look here. They're coming at 200 degrees. That's beautiful. Uh, and then by the time they leave, they are about 250. Now, they used to be 270, so I think we're going in the right direction there and coming down into this ice insulated pipe sorry uh we are down at 206 again so we seem to be of set we seem to be settling in to a new equilibrium of about 200 degrees hopefully the chilling down will help so one thing that i have been noticing is slowly over time as people as duplicates have been going in and out via this airlock over here we've been losing little bits of steam to the destructinator so i am about to go and do so put in an insulated bridge over here but i'm also wanting to put a piece of automation inside we should have the atmospheric sensor here and this will keep track of how much gas is actually in here i'm just gonna drop one in uh, does it have an overheat condition i don't know we're about to find out okay slamming that down there it doesn't actually say so we're gonna have to make do with it uh, and then i want some automation wire of course the iron stuff come up and out and then i'm gonna follow this line back up here this isn't quite what i want but i might be able to make use of it actually can we do this automation break that that way ah oh, beautiful and then break that that way it saves me having to put down all the line that was already there we put this into there and then bring this one down to join up with this new network wonderful as a bit of an experiment just before this thermal aqua tuner completely dies i'm going to move this liquid vent up and above it I'm just in some sort of vain hope of keeping the temperature down low as you can see we've got some water being formed here so maybe maybe these two things can come together to help i'm not super helpful about it actually help oh no 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 I'm, i was about to say i'm not super hopeful about it actually helping but i've just noticed there's a bit of automation back there that we need to try and like br bridge over like that and then the input wire there let's deconstruct that 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 should help a lot <laughs> no no it didn't help <laughs> Okay, we can't let this one go unchecked because a whole bunch of stuff breaks when it does. So I'm going to go ahead and deconstruct. Where do we want to deconstruct this? I'm going to start with this liquid bridge over here. No, 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 no. This liquid bridge here. All right, beautiful. And hopefully that will allow the pressure to flow down this system uh, underneath. Now, uh, as I say, we can't just leave this like this because uh, we need to cool this water down. As it, as it stands, we are dropping through about 58 degree water. That is unacceptable. So I'm starting to work on a new platform down underneath uh, i'm thinking that maybe we can uh stop the heat from coming down by by having this down here hopefully the water will come through drop down uh be nice and chill and uh keep everything fairly well regulated down here we might end up having to throw down some crude oil but that that's all right that's well within our capabilities and i'm literally just replicating this system down here okay with this thermal aqua tuna being put into place i think it's a strong go time for putting this in up here because i want to try and take these tiles out here so we can have a little bit of interaction between these two items and then call a little bit of cooling down by the thermal aqua tuna that's my plan i might just be wasting more steel here we never will no really until we try it out so that's what i'm gonna do here uh hopefully i was i was kind of expecting mad frank to come down here let's go and find out where he is well yo man what are you doing where where are you going you're all the way down below no i don't i don't want you to do that so let's let's do something that i've learned here if i get mad frank and i go hey could you actually move to there and then he does move you'll see that suddenly uh why why is the big job because i didn't i didn't put the priority up i know why here if we put this priority up so it should be the top job uh, and then we go hey bad frank could you move over to here then he should all on his own go back over to do the airflow tile beautiful so mad frank's coming along but i think actually miss aligns come along to steal the job that's uh that's a bit weird i've noticed that happened a couple of times between those two i'm i'm fine with this happening oh maybe she was just making a delivery but i hope really i hope she's coming down to break these tiles this is the the one thing that we need to be happening here now and right away for the ideal okay so did that not are we not having a construction error there no turns out not it turns out that they are considering breaking the tiles much much more important okay that's fine if that's where you want to be with that that's fine i will just 
adapt my plans. So as you can see, immediately the insulated tile is. Oh, what's going on over here? What 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 is going? Why why are you going up there? That's not at all what I want. Uh, Mad Frank, I need you to get down here. Right. So now that that is done, let's uh, let's move you just down and out. Just 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 get down here, and then we'll turn this right up to import. Very important, and someone can come along and fix that. Okay, man, Frank sealed that one up for us. Now all we can do is hope that this won't uh, get too hot. I, I can see that maybe it will. I can see that maybe it will. Uh, but if that happens, then I'm going to drop a whole load of crude oil in here to um, act as an, uh, a sort of a heat buffer, if you will. Uh, because as you can see, we've got steam coming out 123, and then we've also got steam down here at 100. It can get up to 500 degrees or so, but like these are are spiking events events that don't happen for the very long so if we have a big buffer liquid down below that should smooth that all out for us well i guess we're about to find out because here comes the super hot steam i was kind of hoping we'd have a little bit more uh, oxygen movement here but it doesn't seem to have been happening that well awesome we just cleared out enough so i'm going to put that tile back in place and suck out another vacuum and this should be now total oh, wrong button this should now be totally operational it'd be really nice to get that little bit of oxygen out of there. Another thing I've been thinking about is whether I want to pump, poke a one similar hole coming up into here. So we can try and get some of this oxygen out. We've got a whole bunch of hydrogen in there, but there's also oxygen. I think I think we're actually going to do it, actually. Let's do this. Igneous rock. No, 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 no. Airflow tile. Uh, and we'll pop that down. Oh. <laughs> well, it's moving literal micrograms out at a time. But yeah, it, it is working. <laughs> So over the past few days, I have gone back and put in one of these great big long petroleum lines here. I want to try and bring it all the way back down to this area here. You can see we've got a little, little bubble of petroleum coming down. And this is trying to go into the two cooling loops that we've got turning over here. We've got the one that comes up and over from the oil down below. And of course, the one going through the aqua tuna and cooling down the steam turbines up there. Now, I'm not sure which way this, this little bubble is going to go. I was hoping down, beautiful, it's going down uh, to go through this liquid bridge here, where I gets introduced into the the cooling loop underneath as you can see we've got a big section here that hasn't got any petroleum in it and the whole time that this is not getting uh, filled with petroleum it's not transferring heat so that's uh, that's definitely something that i want to get on with though that said look at this temperature here it's tw uh, 274.9 i mean that sounds like it's under 275 if you ask me but we will leave this just for another couple of cycles uh, i want to try and figure out a way of trying to get into this from this side as you can see we've got um, some big problems over on this side. There's the germ overlay. Zombie spores. No, I don't even want to. Uh, but we're going to try and figure out how to get in here. You can see that I've been like sort of planning out how to do a little S-shaped um, turn back here. Uh, I don't think it's actually going to work out as well as I thought it would, but we'll, we'll see what we can do. Uh, what, what my plan is, if we destroy that and destroy that, we should be able to put a door, let's get the door, one here and one down here with insulated tiles in between, and hopefully, hopefully that will enable us to get in without letting too much of this heat out. That said, it's about on equilibrium with outside now. We're just going to go for it. We're just going to go for it. I might just go for it. I might just uh, put that to back to below. Let this cool everything down. 273274. Let's see if it gets a little bit warmer in here or not. I've, I've got a feeling we're kind of stuck where we are with the temperature. Yeah, this looks good. This looks good. On this side, we've got 277. Maybe we did want to just leave it just a little bit longer. All right, let's just leave it just a little bit longer. I'll catch you in a couple of cycles, maybe. Hopefully this will cool down enough for this to be like 260, something like that. Look at this weird thing where Miss Align just keeps on being fleeing from something. I'm not sure where it is she's going because the only place that I think we've got poke shells are up in the farm up here. And whilst, yes, these guys are aggressive because they've got themselves a little bit of a, an egg in there, I didn't think they were going to be that much aggression. But uh, maybe, maybe there's one somewhere else that I'm not paying attention to. Because Miss should have gone from here, ran out past this way, not seeing any poke shells anywhere down here. What Ran down here, check around here for poke shells. No, no, no. Maybe in here somewhere? No. And now we're down at the hot area. So I don't, I don't get where she's getting attacked from. Now Luna's fleeing and all I did was send her to the, to the triage cot. Ah, it's got to be these guys. It's got to be, right? 
All right, I've turned off access to this door to both Miss and Luna. I'm probably going to actually do the same on this side as well. And let's see if that cuts down the number of attacks. It's taking me a little longer than I would have liked to have got all the infrastructure in place before I start digging my way down here. You can also set up, set up some sort of weird lock system here. My plan is to drop a ladder down along the line of this pipe. I then got a, a door here, an open space and a door here. I want to put a pump in here to pump all of the gases out. And we can have a, like a nice little vacuum lock there. Uh, and then hopefully everything will be pumped out. We're going to filter out all the petroleum to go off to our power generation over here and then all the other waste products come out of here along this line and get dumped back into the into here because as far as I'm aware the only thing that should get dumped in here is crude oil and petroleum and if crude oil has made it through without getting warmed up I want to dump it back in of course there will be other ways of us trying to make sure liquids get out like we've got a nice little filter a uh, nice little space sorry here where we could fit another filter in if need be so we could like take off the crude oil and then send all the other foul liquids up and out that way. Not that I would know what to do with, uh, I don't know, say if phosphorus got dropped in there or something. Yeah, I, d I don't know what to do with that. But as I've been sorting out all of this, if I press H, I heard the printer go off. Now, I am looking for a friend for Decipher. I need someone who can do the ranching and the ranching strong. Turns out that's not a thing, but 150 kilos of lime. I am running out of lime, as I can show you over here. Oh, in fact, that look, before this has even landed, lime zero. Let's let it run through lime 100. 135. Beautiful. We full on run out of lime, uh, which is quite interesting because we've got uh, all this fo all this fossil. Where did I just see it? Raw mineral fossil. Look, we've got 24 tons of fossil. How can we not have any lime? What's wrong with this place? Is this not turning fossil into lime? There we go. Uh, it's quite nice that we managed to get through all of our time just using the poke, sh uh, poke shell, sorry, poke shell, I don't know which one that wants to be, poke shell of both small and large, and of course the egg shell over here. Uh, so th yeah, that's pretty cool that we've only just started dipping into fossil. Um, it's a shame that we didn't realise that earlier, because if we have a look over here, that 135 is literally all we've got. So for the past couple of cycles, I've had Miss Alina and Mad Frank going around putting in all the different um, infrastructures that we need to try and get this whole setup over here up and working as you can see Mr. Lines coming back the, the power has not been in, installed yet but that doesn't bother me that much I am going to go ahead and say that I want this this little tile here deconstructed it's on quite a low priority compared to everything else around it so hopefully we'll get everything all the infrastructure etc put into place before the tile opens it's always decipher or cubic coming up and getting in there that's uh, gonna have to try and get them into atmospheric suits at some point oh look all this got destroyed but not actually being destroyed that's a bit of a shame let's uh, do that and then we can ask the, the, uh, the duplicates to come along afterwards and destroy them by hand as they can reach up that high. All right, beautiful. What is going on over here? We've got uh, Jelly going along making a few deliveries. We should have Mad Frank and Miss Alive. Where is Mad Frank right now? Oh, there he is. I was about to start going off and having a look, but he's gone and picked up all the materials that are needed for down here. So I guess we are just going to wait a little bit and see for when uh, the first person cracks this open. Uh, and then all of this should hopefully get built very, very quickly because, uh, as I say, it is on the highest of priorities. That's not quite panic-inducing alarm systems. Okay, Miss Lion, uh, literally as I spoke, st uh, stopped speaking there, that's what I was trying to go for, uh, has d dug away this little uh, insulated pipe. I'm hoping that they're not going to go do that. Where, where are you actually going? Construct ladder and construct self. Let's uh, let's see where this is going. I've got a feeling this isn't actually as important. Oh, 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 no, no, it's not as important. I, I definitely put it down on a five, not a nine. So if we put ma uh, misaligned over there, Mad Frank over here, uh, what I think happened is that the tile had not been exposed for long enough for the jobs down here to get on these two's uh, list. These two's list? Yeah, you heard me. Uh, so we had to uh, interrupt them from going off to the secondary jobs um, that were lower priorities, it turns out. Uh, once we interrupted them, they then could see these jobs down here and get on with it. All right, beautiful, wonderful, amazing. So I did a quick rearrangement down here because I thought that when this uh, th when this was on the same line as this sort of system over here, we're not going to have any sort of buffer, if you see what I'm saying. So it takes a while for this area over here to cool down, the, 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 the compartment on the left to cool down. Uh, during that time, all the doors are going to be closed, and this pump is still going to want to be working. So I've put this, um, oh, I don't know, eight-layer um, sump down below here, eight-tile sump down below. One, two, three, four five six seven eight oh called it nice uh so that we can st uh, store up a whole bunch of liquids down here whilst this is then slamming down these doors opening these doors and trying to cool down the petroleum it should work out i might want a deeper sump but it should work out 
I mean, getting down to this lab, this magma might be a bit much. <laughs> Oh, we very nearly got the system up in place, but we seem to have a few visual glitches here. You can see that we've got this uh, this job order put down for putting this conductive wire down. That doesn't seem to want to disappear, despite the fact that I have cancelled this job many times. Ah, cancelled this job many, many, many times. Let's uh, let's put that back. Liquid pumps are made from steel. Thanks. Uh, and also, what what's this five number here? Now I've only got one mod installed. I can't imagine it broke it that much. I'm going to quickly do a save. We're going to jump out to main menu and come back and. Let's see whether it all disappears or not. Oh, the save is long. Yeah, it worked. All right, awesome, good. All right, so we're starting to pump some liquids out of here. That's all being sent back. Beautiful. I think it's probably time to turn this onto the correct way round. All right, beautiful. When this gets brought down below 200 degrees, this will, of course, all open back up. Uh, and that should enable us to start chilling this down a lot quicker. So you see how there's not now a lot less liquid in here as opposed to uh, all the liquid spread across the whole lot. So hopefully... Just hopefully that is now going to bring this down enough to open up. And whilst this is pumping out, this will be bringing it down. What I want to see is this le liquid level get down to about this, these two tiles down here. Uh, and then I want to see this also flow. And eventually I want to watch this open, but that's going to take a little while, I think. So all the crude oil that is being passed over is coming around, it's being drip fed into here. I should imagine the chill is now going to start taking some temperature away. And when this thermo sensor, it has gone below that boom, uh, 400 degrees, we'll shut this door, allowing the flow of heat to carry on through. Because obviously when the door is open, it's basically got a vacuum in there. And that uh, vacuum, as we all know, doesn't transfer heat very well. Uh, same with the insulated tiles either side that we have here. But when it does get down cool enough, the door shuts and the heat starts to flow hopefully warming up the thermo sensor back up to 400 beautiful beautiful turning a whole bunch of the uh crude oil over here into petroleum which should be increasing the pressure talking about pressure 455 kilograms you've seen that up there Oof. Hmm, I know it's a lot more volume here than there is over here. We got like six tiles here as opposed to the eight and a bit over that way. So uh, I've got a feeling we're going to be overspilling over that side before we get around to actually being able to use this properly. But over here, I have just heard this go off and we are looking for a rancher. Show me a rancher. Tony and Cooking. Da, 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 no, 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 none of these. Let's get the shine nymphs. Definitely oh, need a rancher though. Need a rancher. But I think we may have actually done it, guys. Looking at this, all the systems seem to be in place that we never really have to worry about the cooling system ever again. We are now going to move over to here. It's a little annoying that that is there. But we're going to move over to this side and make ourselves what I'm envisioning to be a petroleum power plant here with maybe a little slickster ranch underneath because the petroleum uh, generators do produce an awful lot of carbon dioxide. And uh, getting some slicksters down here would be very, very nice. But I will see you then Oh, and we're going to do that. Bye! I can't believe we've finally done it. 